All right, this is Joe Dombrowski for uh, WrestleZone Weekly, and I'm joined by somebody that some of you may not know, but uh, is a legend in independent wrestling in the state of Ohio. And uh, I'm not sure if I can properly do justice to a, to a Cody Hawk intro. I mean, I, how would you sum up your career? And I know it's not fair to sum up your career in just a couple of sentences, but uh, how do you think we should introduce uh, somebody with a, a body of work such as yourself? Well, I think uh, just Cody Hawk will be fine for now. <laughs> <laughs> that works. That works. We covered that. Um, but, you know, I... I uh, I haven't made my way to this part of Ohio very often, but, uh, but when I do so, uh, or when I hear about the, the, this type of area, or Cincinnati, thereabouts, um, it seems like there's always two names uh, that are revered and respected, uh, uh, second to none. I think Cody Hawk and Les Thatcher are, are, are two names that really are synonymous with maybe the Cincinnati area, the surrounding parts of Ohio. Um, what do you think... What do you think is it about your career that has given you such a, a lasting legacy here where, we, where you're so revered and respected? Uh, I'd say it's I've been smart. I've played the game correctly, and I've learned every aspect of the business there was to learn. Um, you know, I caught on at an early age uh, in the business as to what I was doing, and uh, you said Les Thatcher it was the other name. Well, Les was my trainer, so I pretty much uh, you know took his formula and added my own little bit to it and rolled with it, and uh, it's, it's been it's been uh, very good for me. Uh, Les is is one of the most uh, uh, famous trainers um, of uh, of recent times. I mean, is there anybody the, back in your training class that you could speak of that uh, that uh, fans would be familiar with today? Uh, I mean, Les was the head trainer back when I started training, but uh, I had guys like um, Shark Boy and uh, MTV's Rory Fox, and uh, you know, I had some good guys like that in my initial training class, uh, and it's probably two of the only guys still left in the business now. It's been you know 20 years. Cincinnati and thereabouts was really uh, kind of a wrestling hotbed of sorts when, when Les Thatcher and HWA were part of WWE Developmental back in the day. Um, take us through some of the career moments that stand out the most uh, in your run, um, be it championships, major opponents, whatever the case is. When we look back at the, the Cody Hawk resume, what jumps out to you the most? Uh, I mean... So many good things during those days, uh, the contract days at HWA, uh, just getting to work with all those top name talent guys that came from WCW and ECW when the big buyout happened. Um, you know, I was right in the middle of uh, 60 or so uh, TV and pay-per-view stars, and I was one of the few indie guys that was able to hang with them. and. You know, so that was pretty awesome. Uh, I got to do uh, you know a lot of stuff with uh, some really good guys, people that I watched on TV, people that I grew up watching. Uh, you know, um, as far as uh, memorable matches go, uh, you know, just uh, just an indie guy named uh, Ray Steele. Uh, it's the first time I ever won an actual uh, championship at, at HWA, and uh, you know that was an amazing uh, moment. Uh, the, the Cincinnati area, there was uh, the Heartland Wrestling Association, and then there was the Northern Wrestling Federation, and we had a, a, a really bitter turf war going on uh, over the city of Cincinnati. Um, but, uh, you know, through uh, smart business decisions, both companies worked together and produced some uh, pretty amazing shows with uh, that rivalry laid out to the fans. Uh, you know, I got to wrestle uh, Carl Anderson on one of their big events uh, before he was Carl Anderson, and he was uh, the NWF champ, I was the HWA champ, and, uh, and uh, together we were drawing some of our biggest houses in our smaller towns. So, you know, a lot of really amazing things, uh, a bunch of WWE things, a bunch of WCW things. Uh, I, don't, I don't really think I can say I have one top favorite memory, but uh, many, many uh, great memories. Well, what a lot of people may not be aware of is that you're responsible for, for a lot of memories that are being made today on television because you made a transition uh, into an accomplished trainer all your own and you have a very accomplished list of students that have been under your tutelage. Let's tell, tell us a little about that. Yeah, I've, I've been fortunate. I've had uh, I've had some uh, some great students roll through my camps, uh, you know, um, uh, Sammy Callahan uh, out there uh, tearing it up in the independent wrestling world. Uh, he did his time down in Florida as part of NXT and uh, you know, he 
he's out of there now and he's uh, one of the top uh, indie stars. Um, Eli Drake, who uh, wrestled for me as uh, uh, Sean uh, Ricker, um, Deuce, Dick Rick, whatever you want to call him. Uh, now he is, uh, you know, making his name uh, in TNA. He's already been the uh, king of the hill or king of the mountain. Uh, I said king of the hill, the king of the mountain champion. And uh, you know, I think he just won the, the briefcase or whatever in that battle royal. So he gets to, to fight for the big championship now. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, you know, the top guy, uh, John Moxley, aka Dean Ambrose. Um, you know, arguably the best student I ever trained, uh, the easiest student I ever trained, uh, my roommate for a long time, a personal friend, and uh, an all-around good guy. Um, you know, uh, if there's ever a pattern or a mold of somebody I, I would want to train, it would be that guy, somebody who already knew the business coming in, somebody who already understood psychology uh, at a very young age and, and just wanted to, to work. So, so, uh, and take us back, I mean, Dean Ambrose, I don't know him real well, I've met him a couple of times, but he always seemed like a, a unique cat. You know, somebody that marched to the beat of his own drum well before Dean Ambrose and even before he kind of blew up as John Moxley. Uh, take us back to the first impressions you got when Dean Ambrose first came to you to get trained. And was there a specific point in time when you knew he was going to be something special? Well, when he first showed up, he was about 16 or 17 years old. I met him at one of our uh, shows we were running at a flea market. Uh, he, uh, he was introduced to me and uh, Les at the time. And uh, Les still owned the company, but I was running the training. Les didn't want to take the liability of training people under 18. Uh, he told John to come back when he was when he was of age. And then I ended up telling him, uh, you know, you can hang out with us. Uh, you know, help set up the ring, tear down chairs, and just be around. And then when you turn 18, you know, you'll be ready to go. And, and he did just that. He stuck around and he did his thing. And. Uh, uh, at some point, you know, he had some travel situations uh, and he ended up moving into my house with me just so that uh, the travel would be easier for him to get back and forth to practice. Um, and then, uh, you know, very early, the first couple of days of just watching him take bumps and falls in the ring, uh, and I didn't have to really teach him anything. He, he already knew, like, how to take bumps. He already knew how to take falls. He already knew all the names to all the moves, um, which that, that makes uh, training somebody very easy. Uh, he was very much a student of the game, watching tapes all the time, videos, and, uh, you know, just all the time in front of the television, watching any and everything he could wrestling-wise. So. So, uh, it's smart to psychology and, and knew the game. So, Now, I, I've had the pleasure of watching uh, uh, Johnny Gargano come up through the ranks in the Cleveland area, and I was always able to look at him, even back when he was 18, 19 years old, and just see that he was out working just about everybody else in a given locker room he was in. Would that describe Dean Ambrose as well when he was younger? Yes, it totally would describe him. Uh, every, every show he was on, he was heads and shoulders uh, above everybody else as, uh, you know, one of the best, if not the best, talent on the show. Um, I tried uh, real hard on my shows at HWA to run him with all the top guys that were there, and uh, including myself, and, uh, you know, uh, we just did everything we could do to, to push him as, as hard and far as we could and you know and he was a smart guy and he played the game right and he got out there and got his name out there and he did everything that you're supposed to do and, and we see where he is today. Now Sammy Callahan is another interesting story and I love the guy to death but I also want to choke his lights out sometimes. Uh, I see this guy, every time I see him, he, he's my best friend, he hugs me, but then, man, to get this guy to answer a phone, my God. And Sammy, I'm just gonna bury you on this uh, uh, show because I can, and you're not gonna do anything to stop me. But this guy is somebody who also worked his ass off, um, came into the business, what was it, 350, 400 pounds? I mean, he was uh, uh, very much overweight, but uh, worked his ass off to, to get where he is. When I met him, he was still pretty rough around the edges, he was a little a bit, a uh, little bit of a heater sometimes, but but he ended up uh, uh, maturing in a big way, both as a performer, as a person, and uh, I could be proud of the success he's had in NXT and, and across the world. Uh, talk about the journey uh, of young Sammy Callahan and, and what you saw as far as him uh, from humble beginnings to growing up to being the man he is today. Uh, when I first met Sammy, he had just come out of like a, I don't know a six or eight or twelve week uh, program that he did with Shark uh, Shark Boy. He did a, a class. With Shark Boy, and uh, you know, 
know, he'd been, I'm pretty sure he had done some backyard stuff, and then he'd done that class with, with Shark, and then he was working a few shows here and there around the area, and uh, then uh, when, he, when he got to me, you know, very, very overweight, uh, but had heart and drive and desire, came to training early, stayed late, came to me and asked me to, to help him with a diet and a workout plan, and, and we got that stuff squared away, and, and he stuck to it, and the weight started falling off, and I mean, it wasn't just falling off, it was falling off fast, uh, you know, uh, as he got smaller, he got stronger, he got better looking, and he got smarter about what he was doing in the ring. And, and this is a guy who also played the game correctly. As he uh, grew uh, in confidence, uh, you know, he, he got his name out there and he pushed and, and he did everything he could do. And, you know, uh, I wish he would have stayed with WWE, but, uh, you know, that, that was his decision to make. And, uh, you know, he's, he's doing well for himself now. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of him. Well, I'm sure you got to be proud of uh, all of your students that have moved on to, to, to big things uh, throughout the wrestling business. Uh, is there anywhere your fans can find you on social media or online that you'd like to promote real quickly? Um, yeah, and you're right. Uh, all my kids that have gone on, I'm proud of all of them. But, you know, all the ones that even didn't make it, that are just out there doing their thing in the indie wrestling world, I'm proud of all of them, too. And uh, as far as uh, finding Cody Hawk, you can reach me at my website, which is CodyHawk.net. Uh, you can reach me on uh, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, uh, all those uh, backslash Cody Hawk. Uh, and uh, you, know, you can also find me at my other uh, business, my full-time job, uh, mycustomvapes.com. Uh, and tonight you'll find me right here in Williamsport, Ohio. Well, there you go. And this is uh, Cody Hawk, the man that unleashed Dean Ambrose and Sammy Callahan on the wrestling world. I thank you for your time. And uh, I, I thank you for, for Dean Ambrose and my condolences having to deal with Sammy Callahan. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, the interview, man. Thank you. That was Cody Hawk. Great to talk to him. And, of course, more information on me can be found at joe-dombrowski.com. Adding things by the week there. And I'll be on the road this weekend for the International Wrestling Cartel. Winner take all in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. IWCWrestling.com for more information. Next week on the program, I talk to the one and only Charismatic Enigma. Jeff Hardy will be joining us to talk all about total nonstop deletion. And the quest to prove if uh, the Hardys are the best tag team in all of the entire wrestling universe. We're going to get a little bit of a teaser on uh, that episode of TNA Impact, filmed entirely at the Hardy Compound, that will air a week from this Thursday on Pop TV. We'll get a little preview for you with Jeff Hardy and talk about some of his incarnations and alter egos as well here on the WrestleZone Weekly Road Report. I'm Joe Dombrowski. Thanks for listening.